Hi and welcome back. This video is all about the structure and refinement of the character. Hope you enjoy it. Right now I'm using an IMN brush insert from badking.com.au. It's a great ZBrush resource for finding various IMN inserts that give you a great jump off point uh, when you're starting your work. Um, and if you don't know what a IMM insert brush is, it's basically a brush that consists of parts or meshes, uh, various meshes that can be incorporated into your sculpting. Um, it's an extremely valuable tool to use and I highly recommend you use it. Uh, you can find a lot more information on IMM um, brush inserts uh, on the pixelogic.com website. So right now I'm using one of uh, one of the the arms that I created from before for another creature, the spy. Uh, as you can see, is is pretty similar. And I just inserted um, one of the arms that I I started with from the from the brush pack from Bad King. And uh, now I'm going to start adding that to my soldier here, and we'll we'll start to refine that and blend it and match it into uh, the, the concept. As you can see, even though my character didn't have arms before, adding using the IMM brush inserts, you can quickly add uh, the the arms, um, blend it, sculpt it onto the existing asset, and away you go. Is uh, another very efficient um, use of your time uh, to use pre-existing and pre-existing assets, so you can kit bash uh, as as often as you can, so you're not reinventing the wheel every single time you, you create a character. So here I'm creating some bony regions uh, along with uh, some of the muscle and uh, just to separate the arm, give it a little bit more interest. So here I just separated the head so it can get more definition, uh, more subdivision levels uh, in the in the head portion of itself. So I'm not subdividing the entire body. Um, that's a, a pretty much a waste of resources. So I separated the head uh, just to give me more uh, subdivision levels.
even though I can't see the neck in the concept uh, for this character, a, a vision with a, a head that a head and neck area that long, he would have he would need some pretty powerful muscles uh, to keep his head um, up and agile. So right now I'm going to spend some time on the head and the face. Uh, I'm going to give it a little bit more detail, a little bit more love, and just to make sure that uh, I, I get the, a good feel of the of the character. Um, I spend I spend quite a bit of time, um, uh, certain parts, um, just refining the head and the face uh, uh, because it, it's the most personality, right? So I like to spend time, uh, especially at this stage, the refinement stage. And starting to build the, the head up uh, first, and then the rest of the body will flow um, after that. So here I'm using Mass by Polygroups. I, I set the option to 100. It's a great option when you want to only affect certain polygroups within the mesh that you're working on. Uh, it works great uh, with uh, the panel loop created pieces. So now I'm going to start defining the muscles um, in the face. It does look like uh, basically muscle fibers. So I'm going to try to replicate that um, because it's one of the more prominent things on on his uh, his head.
here I'm trying to get the, the muscles, uh, this fibers look a little bit more fleshy um, and I'm using the clay buildup smooth right now which is another which is a form of clay buildup uh, the standard um, version of it but this one is obviously a little by the name smooth it's a little uh, softer uh, softer to the to the mesh and it builds up the form in a very very nice even way These muscle fibers that I'm bringing in now were created for a previous creature, which I haven't released yet, but you will see that one soon enough. But these random tools um, were created with the Curve Tube Snap Brush, and it's a great brush for this type of work. Uh, I use it quite often, actually. So instead of me fighting to create these small fibers uh, with uh, the mesh resolution, I just bring in, like insert these tiny tubes that I created all over uh, for, a for the previous character and um, bring it in and adjust it accordingly. Uh, it saves a lot of time and I don't have to go in there and sculpt individual tubes like this. It will take an insane amount of time to get them look correct and uh, with the time that I had, I, I couldn't do it. So um, this is mainly to cut down time and it looks better uh, by doing it this way. Plus you can individually size these tubes uh, or fibers uh, as I will call it um, by using the, the mass by polygroups option. You can, you can have them polygroup individually and then you can inflate them separately, move them separately from, from each other. Very handy, quick way to get this uh, stuff implemented instead of sculpting it uh, by hand. And now you see, I, I joined them together. Uh, I, I merged the two pieces together, and now I can go in there with the clay buildup and start to um, gel the the pieces together so they're more integrated um, while retaining the the poly groups underneath. So I can still move them after after the fact, but right now I can just use clay buildup and and get them more integrated with each other. As you can see, pretty quickly, right? I, like I got um, all that, all those muscle fibers done in a reasonably short amount of time and it, to me, it looks pretty good, uh, and it works, and it gives enough depth um, without going there by hand and doing it. I'm just adding some uh, pop marks and little damage marks on the surface to give it a little bit more visual interest. You don't have to do it; you can do it with the texture. But um, right now, I just I'm just in the mood, so I just added some some little areas and pop marks and stuff like that. As you can see, you don't need a crazy list of brushes. You can just get away with doing most of your work with uh, the four brushes I mentioned uh, in the previous video, one of the first videos. I mean, the Polish Hard, Dam Standard, uh, uh, Clay Buildup, and, and the Standard Brush are the workhorses right now, and uh, they get a lot of uh, detail into your meshes. Um, without going crazy with all the different types of brushes. Maybe sometime I'll use the inflate brush. Um, I actually use that some yeah, mo most of the times, yeah, just to give like, especially with organics, I like using the inflate brush. Um, but in general, four brushes is basically all you need to get a lot, a lot done.
So now I'm finished with the head. It, it's a uh, good enough detail um, to get going. It, it, I can see um, it's starting to come together now. So I, I start to move on to other areas uh, that need more refinement. As I mentioned before, uh, I like to jump around um, the character when I'm working and I never stay in one area uh, for too long. Um, I just want to keep my, I just want to keep the creativity flowing and, and staying in one area too long just saps that creativity. Um, it, for me personally, I, I, I like to jump around and, and look at the overall character as I go. That's a really odd looking muscle. defining the muscles a little bit more uh, just to just to make it a whole cohesive unit um, and being an alien being a creature uh, I can get away with doing a little bit more Um, the panel loop wasn't the greatest. Uh, I had to clean up a bit with uh, the polish by polish by groups. It wasn't the greatest, so right now I can use the inf the inflate brush um, and use the polish hard to, to get it to look uh, pretty decent and, and give it enough thickness that it can work on either side of it. But when I'm, when I'm working, I, I try not to let that, uh, the perfectionism um, uh, get to me. Um, I used to be extremely, um, I, I had OCD basically with um, how perf perfect everything had to be. And it, it wasn't for, it wasn't since the recent years that I, that I decided, you know what, I, um, I need to let, let the, the creativity flow uh, more so than being perfect every, every step of the way. Uh, with perfect angles and perfect smoothness and and no, it just it just doesn't give the same life as uh, just going with it, just being creative, just flowing with what whatever uh, ZBrush decides to give you. Uh, so I, it wasn't perfect, but it worked out in the end, right? I mean, like I, I refined it, I, I inf inflated, like I mentioned, and it worked out.
I know it may seem like my attention span is pretty bad, but like I mentioned, I just love um, moving around a character. Uh, whatever catches my interest, whatever uh, shiny object uh, catches my interest at the time, I, I go to. Uh, like I was working on the shoulder just now, and then all of a sudden, hey, look, I, I forgot something on the, uh, a piece on the chest, a piece of armor on the chest, so let me go and do that. It's just whatever um, I feel for. I always try to model for animation. Um, it's one of the things I learned uh, way back. Um, I always try to model for animation to just to keep in mind how these parts are going to move when the, the creature is being animated. Even if you don't animate, even if you if, even if your creature is going to be a, a statue um, that you're going to have printed, well, I always try to keep in mind how this creature would move with all these um, parts on it. And right now, um, with, the, with this design, um, it will have a, almost a hard time moving his shoulders up a certain way. But then again, this is a, a soldier character, so he won't be raising his hands up in the air or anything like that. Um, I, I believe anyways. Um, so um, having his shoulder pieces joined together may work. Um, it may be that piece on his, his, his traps. Um, uh, is a soft, soft, softer material, um, so he might be able to move his arms up just a bit. Um, but always, keep, I always try to keep in mind um, how these things are, will move when it's moving around, when it's animated. One of the things I love about uh, concepts like this, when I'm given a concept with just a front view, I love the fact that uh, it's just a front view because now I get to play, now I get to be creative. Uh, I can't see everything, so I have to think of um, something that would be interesting that would be there, like this piece right here, for instance. Um, I can't really make out what's at the side of his head, um, so I get to go in there, just be creative, just look for something that will, that will make the character feel better um, from, from what I can see. And if you haven't already noticed, um, none of these meshes, none of these pieces I've created so far have any subdivision levels on it. Everything has been Dynamesh um, right now. I honestly don't believe I use any subdivision um, on, on any of these parts um, on this creature. Maybe one or two, um, but most of it is Dynamesh uh, parts, Dynamesh shell, Dynamesh areas. I think the most I use sort of subdivision on uh, is the the muscles the body um, but all the armor parts uh, all the the armor here is basically dynamesh uh, it's just so that I can keep it 
um, alive like I, like I'm not set in one design like if something doesn't work I can go in there and uh, dynamesh it and, and make it work for me Here I use the, the Curve 2 uh, snap brush uh, and it I, I absolutely love that tool, it, it works so well. Again, I merged it, and um, now I'm and now I'm blending it together using the clay buildup and the polish hard brushes, while still keeping them separate as, as their separate own poly groups. So I'm using back face mask here uh, so I don't uh, sculpt through to the other side because this, these armor pieces here are a little too thin so I have to use back face mask uh, uh, just, to, just to be able to sculpt on one side without affecting the other. Here I'm using a slash brush. It gives even a more deeper cut than the dam standard. Uh, it works really well for just really gouging out a, a surface.
it's really interesting watching um, a video of, of myself work. Um, it's like one, it's like back in the day when you're in a sports team and your coach uh, record uh, your game and you and you're watching it uh, in a review of the team you did and you see all the mistakes and all the things you could have done better. And that's what I'm looking at right now. It's like I'm seeing a lot of the things I've done uh, here in this in this sculpt and a lot of things that I uh, could improve on in my future sculpts. So I guess it works uh, as my benefit also that I've recorded these videos. And I hope you're enjoying um, what you're watching so far. So I'm spending some time on the form uh, armor here because I might not come back to it uh, at this point in the, the sculpt. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time here just to make sure that everything is, is uh, decent enough that I can go ahead with the, the rest of the model. Because chances are I won't have time to come back to it. I'll speed up the video here to eight times since this part is a pretty repetitive process and hopefully by now you have enough insight with how, with how I work uh, so you can follow. Uh, and by the way, if you ever have any questions at all, uh, please feel free to get in contact with me at any time. So I just did a small test render to see how the shadows lie and basically just to view the character a bit differently. Time to concentrate on the back some more since I basically neglected it up until this point and I wanted to keep everything flowing so uh, as, since this, you'll be seeing this character in a 360 view I think it's best I don't forget how uh, about the back uh, so we'll spend some time on the back and, and uh, define it uh, a lot more.
Here I'll start fleshing out the muscles to make them more defined. Since they're a very prominent aspect of this creature's design, I want to spend some time to make sure they look uh, pretty good. With the back, I wasn't too sure what to do uh, with the back of this character. I, I left it open because I was a, my thought process behind it was he's an alien soldier. He's a soldier. He's more front um, offensive, uh, and if his back was ever turned to the enemy, it would be detrimental for him. And so I, I'm, I'm getting trying to get inside the head of a, a creature like this, you know, like uh, I'm a soldier, I'm a warrior. Uh, his back is, so I decided to make his back very defined, very strong um, to, you know, he's be carrying some heavy weapons. So I wanted to uh, focus some mus musculature on the, on the back that would, uh, not necessarily arm, armor. Um, I just felt that it will give, it gives a more appeal uh, to the creature himself, uh, a little bit more uh, story behind behind him. Uh, he, like in the front of him, he's well plated, he's well armored because, like I like I mentioned, he's a frontal assault, basically soldier. He he runs in. Uh, he's not a grunt or anything, but he goes in to take charge and you know. So I decided that the the back of, of the character will be very strong, very uh, very developed, uh, let's say. Um, and he wouldn't necessarily need and he wouldn't necessarily need armor to protect his back uh, because if it, like if it's shown, um, he's dead basically. And this is one of the things, um, even if it's not practical, I just think it looks cool. And, uh, and sometimes you just go with that. So another test render just to make sure everything is, is up to par. And now um, I'm going to use the Curve Tube Snap Brush, one of my favorite brushes for creating um, muscles and such. Um, you can eat, right now it's just a straight tube, but you can make it look more like muscles um, by going into the, the curve options, uh, the size, and enable size and then uh, adjust the curve.
Here I'm just using one of the default alphas um, on a, with the standard brush just to create some finer muscle uh, fibers. Uh, I won't necessarily do all these with a curve 2 snap brush. Uh, th these are just really fine muscles and it helps integrate the, the major muscles and tendons a lot, uh, a little better. So now I'm just integrating the tubes uh, individually. Uh, one of the this is one of the nicer parts of um, creating these curved tube snaps. Uh, they are in individually polygrouped, so you can you can move them um, separately of, of each other, and it works really well. So like I mentioned before, I didn't make these look like uh, muscles from the get go um, using the options because I I like to have it a little bit more random than that. And if you if you make them look like muscles, um, they all tend to look the same. So now I can go in here and make one smaller, one a little thicker, one a little you know longer. Um, and I like working that way a little bit, a little bit better. Now I'm using the inflate tool to, uh, to create the to make it look a little bit more like muscles and make them join together a little better uh, to be more cohesive. I just used a split hidden um, option uh, just to separate these muscles from the main mesh I was drawing them on. And now I'm using the, the same alpha that I used to create the fine fiber mesh on the main body on the muscles themselves uh, to give them more striations um, so they won't look just like tubes. And they don't have to be perfect, they just um, have to represent uh, muscles in a way. Uh, especially for a character like this, uh, they don't have to be uh, perfect. Just added some fine fibers to blend everything a little better. And then I used the inflate tool to, to mesh them together to give it a more organic feel as opposed to just straight uh, line striations.
I believe that will about do it for uh, this portion of the video. Uh, I think this is as far as I'm going to take the, the character. Um, I'm probably pushing on the 8 hour end now. And I'm going to spend some time in the next video going over some of the poly painting. It's not going to be extremely detailed poly painting, uh, but it's just enough uh, to get me going uh, on the final texture that I'll be doing in uh, Substance Painter or Photoshop. Until next video.